welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the most important trait you can have as a scientist and something that's absolutely essential to keep at heart as you go on in your career. This, my friends, is working with professional integrity. You might already think you know what this means. Sometimes I download pirated music onto my work computer. Who hasn't? and you don't need to watch this video because you would never work without integrity, but please watch to the end of this video because there are so many things that happen once you join the professional world that you won't encounter in undergrad and that has real world implications on the livelihoods of the people in the communities that you work for and for the planet in general. I'm gonna start by bringing up the background of many of the fields that we work in today, such as anthropology, zoology, ecology, while there has been people since the beginning of time taking observations on plants and animals, the modern field of zoology, ecology, and anthropology, as well as many other natural sciences, was really kicked off as a respectable profession during the age of imperialism, where many rulers were taking scientists along with them on imperialist missions to help find evidence to promote colonialism of those regions. Charles Darwin was one of these examples and his voyages and expeditions were hugely beneficial to the field of ecology and evolutionary biology, but these missions were funded from the lens of uh, promoting colonialism and imperialism. You can hear this attitude that Charles Darwin has to the people that he encounters in his writings. Uh, after an encounter with, quote, savages in Tierra del Fuego, Darwin says in his diary, one can hardly make oneself believe that they are fellow creatures. In The Descent of Man, Darwin writes, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. Sir Ronald Ross, a British doctor returning from a scientific expedition to Sierra Leone, said in his lecture to the Liverpool Chamber of Commerce about his experience, in the coming century, the success of imperialism will depend largely upon success with the microscope. 19th century imperial ideologies even further capitalized on the fact that scientific discoveries were seen to be dominated by Europeans. They highlighted the fact that there were so many scientific discoveries by Europeans as a way to say that non-Europeans were intellectually inferior and therefore deserved to be colonized. As modern scientists, we absolutely have to understand this history of colonialism as colonialist ideas can still be found in modern science today. When you work in an environment, humans are part of that environment, whether we like it or not. And taking into consideration the needs of your local communities and working both with scientific integrity, but also with professional integrity and knowledge of the communities that you work in is absolutely essential to becoming a scientist. I'm gonna give an example. Say you were working on behalf of a consulting company and an oil and gas pipeline company has asked you to do an environmental assessment of the new area that they're gonna put their pipeline into. Say you are someone with no cultural knowledge of the region, which is quite common for many biologists. You look at the plants, you look at the animals, you look at the ecology of the region and provide your expertise from a completely scientific perspective and provide justifications for why that area needs to be protected or maybe why it is less essential habitat for wildlife. There we go. Let's now pretend you are someone who either has learned about the culture of the local area that you work in or you are a member of that local community doing the environmental and scientific assessment of the area. You see maybe a medicinal plant that is harvested by your people or the people of that area, but no one is called in an archeologist or a cultural specialist. But since you have some of that knowledge to identify those major red flags, you can bring that up to the consulting company. And now they're gonna have to look at that environment and how it affects the local community and their ability to harvest plants that they need for their livelihood. So many of us don't have this knowledge and it leads to so many devastating things being done to local communities and these indirect effects of scientists with limited views of how we view the environment making decisions on behalf of local communities without taking into consideration traditional ecological knowledge or TEK. When we work, we absolutely have to make sure that the voices of the local community is being heard and not ignored, 
or talked over by scientists. A lot of us scientists do come from backgrounds of privilege. Your gender expression, your race, your class biases, whether it's just outright bias or something that's a little bit deeper under the surface that we might not even be aware of can actually be reflected in our scientific work and that's a huge problem the best thing we can do as scientists is being aware of our biases and working to try to challenge those biases that all of us were brought up with you know that's the cultural context of working with professional integrity but there's absolutely even just a core scientific context of professional integrity as a scientist i totally understand most of my viewers are um, undergraduate students or master's students or phd students who maybe have had very limited work experience you might not think this applies to you because you might think i'm always going to work with scientific integrity because those beliefs have been really instilled in you by your professors but trust me, when you get out into the real world, you are going to be challenged on that scientific integrity at one point or another. This might be something you don't even recognize. It might be you wanting to impress a boss, wanting to get a promotion, and you're just letting your brain be swayed a little bit one way or another by maybe someone who's not as ethical as you in your field. If something feels wrong, Usually your gut tells you something is wrong and ask for more information. Ask, well, have we thought about this? Have we thought about the local community? Have we thought about this impact on this resource? Those things are so important and they're so easily um, forgotten when you're working in a world where you have imposter syndrome already and you're thinking, well, if these people with 30 years of experience didn't bring it up, then I must just be like missing something or I just don't know enough yet. I really encourage you to ask questions and the response you get for those questions is going to tell you a lot about whether or not you and your team are working with integrity. If you are sincerely listened to and now you know they're gonna put out a resource to help get those answers or look up those answers for you, that's you know a very positive flag. But if you are encouraged, don't go down that avenue. Uh, I don't think that's something we need to worry about and not answering your questions. I would be concerned. Um, that's something that triggers a bit of a red flag for myself. So then it comes down to like, what do you do if you are working in a job where you are being pressured to work without scientific integrity? One, I think as scientists, we all are responsible for taking ourselves out of those positions, looking for new jobs when we are being pressured to work without integrity. And you've already gone through the avenues in your job, you know, bringing it up to supervisors and no one's listening to you. But also, too, there is a legal ramifications for working without scientific integrity. An example of that is those of us who belong to professional organizations such as professional biologists. A lot of times by law, you know, similar to engineers, we are held responsible for our decisions and gross neglect of important considerations that we should have known better can lead to legal ramifications. So you have to think about all your decisions that are going out there. Are they going to hold up in court? That's unfortunately something we have to always be thinking about is can you defend this in court? If you can't defend it in court, you shouldn't be doing it or signing your name all over it because your name is going to be responsible sometimes for these decisions. That's a bit of a crash course in working with scientific integrity. And it's not something I can just teach you how to do because it's something that's core to who we are and how we work. However, there are so many resources to understanding your own bias. And I will link to some of those in the description below of places to start. But I really encourage you to take this to heart and not say, um, well, you know, I would never make a choice that would have a, a negative ramification on an indigenous community. That's not who I am. But these things work under the surface somehow. And when we don't have diverse groups of scientists, which is the case, most scientists are of a more privileged demographic. Whether that comes to class, race, gender expression, a lot of us do work with a lot of internal privileges that are able to bias our scientific understanding of the world. And so it is our responsibility to have a broader context and analyze things in looking through different lenses and different cultural, social, environmental, scientific lenses. I encourage you to begin down this path. It's a great time to do it. There are a lot of resources available right now for looking at your own 
lenses of how you look at the world and it is incredibly important as scientists as well. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, click the subscribe button down below. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Have you ever been challenged, um, you know, in terms of your professional integrity and how did you handle it? Uh, thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.